All right, people. I got my chef outfit on because I just cooked up a word for y'all. We're going to make this fun. It's, it's going to get a little uncomfortable, but we're going to make it fun. I want to talk about the difference in business focus, producing results, and not letting your emotions get the best of you. Some of y'all may look at this as, uh, that's shrewd, that's uh, impersonable, that's emotional, that's this, that's that. Oh, it's a little tight, but this is my Gipsiana chef outfit from my restaurant in the backyard. This is what I allow my staff to wear as concierge. So you look at the G on the back, Gipsy Hana. One day, in Jesus' name, I'm going to turn this from a, a restaurant vision that I built in my backyard, and I'm going to roll this thing out as a franchise around the company, country. If you're interested, contact me. <laughs> yeah, I'm serious. All right, so, so I want to be able to talk about the difference in business and personal. I've said this many times to people that work for me and work with me. I don't need new friends. What does that mean? You may have a great personality. You may be beautiful. You may be uh, a, a nice person that's got all of this beautiful energy. That's a part of the reason why you work with me or for me. But it was your gifts and your talents that actually got you here. You got your friends, you got your family, you got your loved ones that know your first, middle, and last name. You have, they know your birthday, they know where you live, they know your kids, they know your family. We are here to produce results. You got your friends and I got mine. Let's be clear. A lot of times, familiarity breeds contempt. People get too familiar. People start getting into your personal business and asking questions, and then it goes from professional to unprofessional. You cross the line. Things become uncomfortable. And then all of a sudden, the gift that you use to get you in the door becomes the reason that no one wants to fuck with you. I allow people to get rid of themselves. I don't think of myself as anyone that's above, greater, or more special than anyone. I think that as a, as a captain, as a leader, I rely on people on my team to help me to mold, shape, and develop visions and ideas in order to get them and release them to the world. I can't do it without my team. Will I do it without them? If I have to, absolutely. But I am a team player and I am a captain. But don't get familiar. Don't get familiar. I am not your friend. You got your friends, and I got mine. We are here to conduct business. We are here to produce results. We are here to create a shift in the universe. So I am, I am saying this to all of you beautiful people, a part of the love circle. Some of y'all are fuzzy fuzzy with your bosses and your coworkers. They have already decided if they like you or not. You cannot crack no jokes to get them to feel any different about you. The reason that you are there is to produce results. Some of y'all are so desperate for friends. Some of y'all are so desperate to connect. You get off of your focus and you, get, you steer away from your gift that created the opportunity for you because you are desperate to connect. Your gift and your capabilities is the main reason that you're even, even connected to the situation. I don't want to lose y'all. Stay with me. God will never give you something somebody else is supposed to have. I'll say it again. God has already figured out what he has in mind for you. And he will never give you something that somebody else is supposed to have. So why are you threatened and insecure about what everybody else has and their blessings and their opportunities? Have you even spent enough time to mold and shape and focus on your own gifts and talents in your craft? Here you are mad and jealous about what somebody else is doing and you don't even focus on your own shit. 
You out here clubbing, partying. As soon as you get a text message when you're about to focus on your craft, you dropped your craft to go focus on some ratchet bullshit. The needle and the blessings and opportunities will continue to bypass you. It's like, here's the blessing. Here, here you are. Here are the blessings. Ah, I'm going to go to somebody else. I'm going to go to somebody else. I'm going to go to somebody else. Why? Because you're not spending enough time with your craft and your gift. You are the reason that opportunities, blessings, and situations are not presenting itself. Because you are one text message phone call or one rumor or one personal conversation away from somebody fucking up your focus. I work hard. I never sleep. There's no one on my staff. And I have a staff of over 40. There's no one on my staff that works harder than me. I take that back. <laughs> I definitely got a couple. But there's no one on my staff that comes close to working as hard as I do. Sleepless hours. I'm up like a mad scientist in a basement, picking everything apart, analyzing the plan. I'm trying to decode everything. I'm trying to decode everything. It's like, it's like we're in the matrix. We're in the matrix, and all of these numbers are coming out of the sky. And I'm looking at 7, 10, 15, and I'm trying to pick it all apart and decode it. Why? Because I'm looking to unleash these visions and ideas on the world. Because the world is an empty canvas waiting on new thoughts to think. And it's on us, visionaries, creative people, forward-thinking people, people that can see what's not there. When you look at my painting that I put up in the, uh, the other day, some of y'all went crazy talking about Illuminati. I don't even know what the fuck the Illuminati is, for one. So let's be clear. I put the third eye on Einstein's forehead because I respect him as a visionary and a person that can see what doesn't exist in most people's eyes. Most of you guys focus on all of the things that you can see. A visionary specializes only those who can see the invisible can do the impossible. Only those that can see the invisible. How do you see something that doesn't exist? You have to be a visionary. You have to be a person that can say, yo, I just seen something. And then everybody who's regular, they're like, man, what the fuck are you talking about? Man, I just had this vision, this idea, and you're trying to verbalize it and explain it, but because they're regular and they're not visionaries, they, they don't have any foresight, they don't have a third eye, so to speak, they can't see what doesn't exist. So then you have to be the vision implementer. You have to be the person to implement the vision. That's why my Twitter name says vision implementer, because I receive my emails from God. I get my ideas, my visions, my concepts, anything. I mold and shape it in my mind like a mad scientist, and then I implement the vision. And then I'm able to talk about it. There are some very gifted, forward-thinking visionaries with movie ideas, treatment, concepts, TV shows, phone apps, ideas, inventions. There are some designers that follow me. And you have all of these ideas and visions running through your mind that you want to unleash on the world. I do not want you to be discouraged because the money hasn't shown up yet. I do not want you to be discouraged because the last five or six people that you try to put the ideas on their radar, they passed on it. Just remember, Jay-Z specifically, in the Made in America documentary, he said he got turned down for five or six different record deals before he got signed. He didn't give up on the vision to be a rapper. He moved forward and the shit happened. Sometimes, when you have a vision for your life, other people will not have that same vision so they will pass on you. But as long as your vision is according to somebody else's vision, that's when the blessings and opportunities will fly. In my life, I'm a chef. I love getting in the kitchen of creativity and cooking up some shit to unleash on the world. Not just through music, visions and ideas, business plans and rollouts. Some of y'all want it, but you're not even prepared for the shit. Preparation meets opportunity. Why are you so easily distracted? Just like somebody can distract you, the blessings are going to keep passing your ass by.
quick, quick, because you don't want it bad enough. You are not willing to ignore the party invites and club invites and drinking and popping bottles with top models. You are so ready to lose focus. And the devil, let's talk about the devil. I hate to talk about the devil because the devil is not a part of my life. But let's talk about the devil. The devil will send you distractions. The devil will orchestrate and maneuver his way into your life and around your life to distract you from the great and significant things that God has put inside of you that you're supposed to unleash on the world. And he is always one text message, phone call, a tweet, and a Facebook post away from you focusing on something negative that somebody says to distract you from your purpose. God has a purpose for all of us. If that, if that wasn't the case, we'd all be gone. We'd all be dead. You are the reason that you're not successful because you are easily distracted. How is it that I'm a multimillionaire? I've been at it going on 20 years in some form of show business. And my work ethic and focus is of a man who hasn't accomplished shit. Most of y'all can't keep up with me and you don't have the things that I have. Why? Because you don't want it bad enough. So I am here as Chef Gibson to announce to the world I got some of the biggest visions and ideas. I can't afford them all, but for everything that I can afford, I am, I am relentlessly gonna unleash all this shit on the world. I am not here to be another person that lived and died and didn't do anything significant. I am here to create a shift in this universe. And you're either gonna be on this train or you're gonna be knocked the fuck out. Unapologetically, I am going to get rid of all things, people and situations that have become a distraction away from my vision. I am here with a purpose. I will stop at nothing. You will be physically and unapologetically removed if you get in the way of my vision. This is you, the distraction. I'm on my way to this. Get the fuck out of the way. I am here to cook up these visions and ideas. And it is disrespectful to God in my mind to have these visions and ideas to pop up and I'm not obedient to the God sent visions to unleash them on the world whether it's a small medium or huge idea I am obedient to God's visions because he could have sent them to anyone who are you to disobey the visions and ideas that God continue to send you why are you so easily distracted and then you wonder why you're broke, struggling, barely holding on. You could have graduated from college. You allow people to distract you. The devil comes in many forms. Sometimes he's in our friends, our family. Sometimes he's in family crises and situations that pop up, ready to distract you from the vision. Will you fold? Will you give in? Or will through it all, you decide, for every level, there's another devil. As you are on your way to something huge and significant, ah, he's gonna try and take your legs out. Somebody dies in the family. Your heart broke. You find out your man or your husband is cheating on you. You find out this, that, anything, everything is a distraction to get you away from your gift. Will you rise above it all? and unleash your visions and ideas and gifts on the world? Or will you be heavily distracted? I'm gonna walk away now. I love you. Look at the G on my back. One day, my restaurant, Vision, which is called Gipsy Hana. Look it up on Google. G-I-B-I-S-I-H-A-N-A. -I -I Gipsy Hana. That's my restaurant, that's my vision. I believe it's gonna be a franchise, one of the most successful in the country. And I'm gonna keep wearing my outfit until the world can experience this. You can go ahead and press stop when I hit this corner.